Hey everyone, this is Alicia Zari over in Sunnyvale School District. Um, I'm a STEM TOSA and looking to support teachers with their math instruction. So this is a game for fourth and fifth grade or upper elementary primarily, and it's called Candy Bar Math. It comes from Miss Math. Her website is zoidencompany.com. And today I'm gonna give you a brief overview of how to play. Candy Bar Math is a game that uses manipulatives to teach students about fractions. You can use this game starting with the very basic um, equivalent fractions, for example, two halves makes one whole, and so on. You can use this for mixed numbers, one and one half, one and three fourths. Um, you can use this for improper fractions or fractions with numerators greater than one, seeing three halves. But primarily what this is using is to get students to get comfortable with the concept of fractions using manipulatives in order to add and subtract. That is the main goal of the game or something we're gonna be practicing. In this game, we have ones, halves, fourths, and eighths. And as Miss Math um, likes to say, we're teaching students how to speak fractionese. So the primary um, learning at the very basic level, a student might say, I have one red piece or one blue piece or one orange piece, or two blues makes one red, which is a great algebra um, integration, two B equals R, if you wanna take it that way. Um, but as students start to build their um, math language, they can start saying that I have one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth equals three fourths, or three times one fourth equals three fourths. So those are just some ways to get students to talk about math and their reasoning. In this game, there's an action cube. The action cube has three pluses and three minuses, and a fraction dice. The fraction dice you can order online. Um, it's an eight-sided dice with the following fractions, um, eights, fourths, or equivalents, halves, and wholes. So it's a special fraction dice, or you can use a spinner that you create, and I'll link that as well. In the game, everybody has a fraction wallet. You can start by um, printing something like this for them, or you can have them co-create um, the first time you introduce the game. In their fraction wallet, they have a reference guide, and in the bottom they have um, where they're going to keep their materials. Um, I'll teach you how to play in just a second. So to play the game, students need access to the four plates of fraction pieces, also known as candy bars and they're also gonna need their candy bar wallet. I'm gonna keep track of the different roles um, as we go, what um, equations we've been solving mathematically on this side, while I show the visual model on this side. With the class, I would have students do this part while I model this part. Um, over time, students should be able to do both. When we start, everybody starts with two holes. It might look like two holes, or it might be some equivalent fraction. I always have the students start by making sure everything lines up and that we're attending to precision with our modeling. So when I come over, instead of something like this, which we can't tell how much it is, lining it up so we can very really clearly visualize our fractions. So I have two holes here, and that's gonna be my starting number. My goal of the game is to end with more in my wallet than I started with. So I'm gonna have to end up with more than my starting number, which was two. Started with two, I'm going to add three-fourths. I 
can very easily add three fourths pieces and see that I now have two and three fourths. This is a great time to talk about mixed numbers and making sure it matches what we see. If students are having a hard time seeing that this is two and three fourths, I might start with something like that so they can clearly see two holes plus three fourths. Next roll, that becomes my new starting number. Two and three fourths. I pick my action. Oh no, I have to subtract. What's it gonna be? I hope it's a small number. One half. Some students will be able to compute easily this in their head. Most are gonna need to start here. If I was starting quickly, I would have students identify, does anyone have a half already on their page? I know that this is a half, so I'm gonna have students take this piece and deliver it back to the bank. If a student didn't have a blue half piece, we would talk about equivalence. That two orange pieces, two fourths is equivalent to a half, and they would turn those back into the bank. Since I'm lucky enough to have a blue piece, I can turn it back. Students will stop here and think that they're done, but in this model, we can't really tell how much is there. We also don't want funny numbers. If I was gonna ask um, students how much they had in their wallet, they'd say one and five-fourths. Well, we don't write one and five-fourths in common math. We would reorganize our number. When I reorganize my number to make holes and the leftovers, I can see that I have two holes and one fourth. This bridges us where I didn't actually have to do common denominators or any of the typical procedures because I can see visually and conceptually that this equals two and three fourths. Or sorry, two and one fourth. Two and one fourth becomes my new starting number. I like to build suspense. I usually have one student um, roll the action cube, someone else roll the fraction cube. For speed, I'll just roll both. Two and one fourth plus seven eighths. Right now, I would have students possibly start with counting out seven eighths. Again, we're going in order. One, two, three, four, five, Six. It looks like that makes a whole seven eighths. Visually, I can see this is three and one eighth. If there were not enough green pieces in the bank, or I want to challenge students, they might not add seven eighths in all green pieces, seven one eighth pieces. They may realize that seven eighths is three-fourths, three-fourths, which is equal to six-eighths, plus one more eighth. Or they might realize that it's a half plus a fourth plus an eighth. This is the way you can differentiate while students are all still playing the same game at the same time. You don't need to pull different groups in order to do this. I believe my answer was three and one eighth. Let's just do one more. Plus five eighths. Three and one eighth plus five eighths equals. This one should be simple. I want students to see mathematically that we're working with eights. They should already know the answer is three and six eighths, they might also know that that's equivalent to three and three fourths. They might be visualizing where it's going to add. And for challenge, I might not even have them pull out five more eighths. I might say, can you find five eighths in a different form? So for this one, I know five eighths 
is equal to 1 half, which is 4 eighths, plus 1 more eighth. So I'm going to add that to my group. I'm going to double check that I have three holes and three fourths, or three and six eighths to match. At the end, I would have students decide whether they profited or if they went into debt. So we would start with what our ending number was. They would pay the bank back how much they started with, which in this case was two holes is what I let them start with. And clearly when I pay the bank back, I see that I end up with a profit of one and three fourths. So I'm pretty happy. If this went differently and I ended with less, say I actually only ended with one and three fourths, I might ask students, how much do I owe the bank? In which I'm now asking students to find out how much more do I need to get to that two that I originally owed? This essentially is subtractions or missing add-in. We're building in a lot of conceptual understanding to practice before going into the procedure. Too often in math, students are only taught something like this. I'll go back to one that was common in maybe fourth or fifth grade. Two and one fourth plus seven eighths equals something. Too often students see problems in isolation. When they see problems in isolation, they end up doing something like this. First, they might make common denominators. Okay, I now know this is two and two eighths plus seven eighths. This is still too much. You'll sometimes see kids then do this. Oh, I need to convert it to improper fractions. 16, 17, 18 eighths plus seven eighths. Now I have 25 eighths. Then they go back and they go back to mixed numbers they're like, okay, eight goes into 25. Some of them aren't solid in their division, so they make mistakes here. You can go three times with one left over. That remainder is gonna tell me that this is three and one eighth. Look at all this work and look at all the chances for mistakes. Every single one of these steps is an opportunity for students to make a very slight mis um, miscalculation or error and makes them not get to this number. But look how we solved it. We started with the conceptual. We use this action as a physical adding or subtracting. And then we had a visual model to prove this is quicker. It is a great way for conceptual understanding. It's good for intervention and it's also good for extension. I hope you give this chance, this game a chance. I'd love to play.